Hi, this is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Tellington T-Touch practitioner for animals and people. And this is Tristan, who's a corgi. He's sleeping. He's down here. Say hi, Tris. <laughs> and we're here for another episode of Conversations with a Corgi. Hopefully today, you can see the sun shining out the window here. We will not have any kind of technical malfunctions as we've had in the last couple of days with the unsettled weather. We're hoping everyone in the southeast and south are safe from the terrible storms and rain that has been down there. Uh, apparently the Connecticut River is quite high here and we are expecting a little bit more rain, but even the stream in my backyard has dumped you know, a foot of water um, off the edges into the Connecticut River. So it's all running to the sea eventually. Uh, and we are still in a moderate drought. Uh, I guess our drought was so severe that we just can't regain the rainwater that we lost all last summer. And you can see it in the plants around here that are struggling uh, to come back from their winter with, you know, the lack of water. Luckily, there's plenty of water now when they really need it but some of the bigger trees are quite stressed from no water all summer. So today we're gonna to continue our discussion of tea touches but first I have an amazing announcement which is, it's not that amazing, my website is back alive. It has still some things we're working out. Andrew has been incredibly busy, my nephew who has been working on it and we finally had a meeting with Brian and Andrew and I yesterday to iron out some of the things that we're working on, but you actually can go to the website and things work and you can look at the pages about the different kinds of work I do and look at the incredible pictures of the many animals um, and people who have been in my classes or have been my clients. And the store, sadly, is the last thing to be built and I am still getting uh, many more things to offer to you for purchase, including flower essences and some homeopathy, uh, the dental drops that my sister has that are so incredible, and her vitamin, which is also incredible, and some other products, uh, all of our books, my book, her books. Right now, my book is the only thing in the store, but um, it's a promise that we will have many more things for you there, and Andrew is expecting to wrap that up in less than a week, so you can indeed go to the website. We also have... Um, many things that I have been uh, participating in lately, articles and things that we will eventually have links to so that you can look at some of those interviews and articles and things that have been written about me and my work in the last couple of weeks. Oh, I still have a dog hair on my nose. So <laughs> it's always hair. This time of year, probably next week, we're gonna have a whole talk about dog hair. And there are always around this time of year great pictures on my corgi lovers um, corgi nation corgi strong websites and facebook pages of a corgi sitting next to a pile of hair bigger than he is that his owner has just combed out of him so it's a time of year when the dog hairs are flying right tris so today i'd like to continue our talk about different tea touches we're just about done all of the tea touches and then we will look at some of the other important aspects of tea touch and work our way through some of the other work I do. We'll be talking about vibrational healing with tuning forks, craniosacral therapy, and um, just some of animal massage and some of the other work I do, emotion code work, as the weeks unfold. So today I'd like to talk about uh, what I learned as the inchworm tea touch which later has been called the earthworm tea touch as well. So some of you may be familiar with it as the inchworm, and some of you may know it as the earthworm. And what the inchworm was originally was just working down a horse's crest on his neck, a big horse neck like this. And it's similar to um, like a python lift for the body, but this is just for the neck and you can do it on the body but it involves two hands moving together. So for the horse, we would have started uh, somewhere up towards his ears and brought our hands together. And then very, very, very slowly separated our hands, moving down his neck. And then we'd slide both hands down a little, push the skin towards each other a little bit, hold, and then very slowly and do that all the way down the horse's neck. Now you can do a similar thing on your cat or your dog 
using their whole body if they're little, like Tristan, or if you have a bigger dog, you can definitely do this on his or her neck. It's a great thing to do with a dog like a greyhound that has a big muscular long neck. Um, it really will bring them a Are we still on? <laughs> I hope so. We just lost the internet again. Ha! <laughs> so much for my prediction that things will be working. Anyway, I think we're still going. I, I think I see things moving up there. Let's see. We're still spreading the word that you're live. This may take a minute. Keep going. Okay, well, that looks optimistic. In fact, if it's not, I will continue. So the reason that you would want to use the inchworm or the earthworm touch on your pet is to relieve tension in the neck, the shoulders, and the back. And for people who have dogs with paralysis in their hind legs or an animal that has a neurologic condition or after a stroke, um, the inchworm or the earthworm is a great touch for that. It does have some ability to connect the front of the dog to the back of the dog. It does bring... Um, a sensation from the front end to the back end in a way and that's why I like it for my poor corgi buddies with DM and it's just a great thing to do if you have a cat or a rabbit especially at a show if they're getting tense and they're too close to other animals in their cages and then they put them out on these little stands to evaluate them when you go to put the animal back in his cage it's a great thing to do or his crate or whatever they have your buns in um, it's a great thing to do some of these inchworms or earthworms down the animal's body. It brings relaxation everywhere. And it just sort of lets that whole tension of being evaluated by the judge leave their body. And that's a good thing to do when they're in a small area. You know, a dog would normally, like Tristan, when he's been stressed um, after a day of work or something, he runs around the living room and rolls on the floor and he goes outside and he rolls on the lawn. And a cat or a rabbit at a show, or even a dog, doesn't really have an opportunity to do that. So this uh, inchworm slash earthworm technique is a great thing to do that sort of gives them some of the same benefits of running around the living room and rolling after they've been tensed up in a stressful situation, being looked at by a judge or performing. So I have today, um, it's also a great thing to do this inchworm work with a cat or a rabbit or even a puppy that doesn't like to be picked up and or who is nervous um, and sensitive. It's a really good thing to do with animals that are afraid of strangers as well because it does bring that relaxation to their body which they need to handle um, the input of like a new person coming into the house. So we're still using our fluffy corgi puppy. <laughs> and I'm just gonna have to squeeze him a little to hold him to show you how to do this. So you're gonna start near the dog's ears or the kitties, and you just bring your hands together very gently, just smushing the skin up a little bit towards each other. It's not squeezing this way, it's pushing together. Just really catching the skin and going together maybe a quarter of an inch. And then you hold that for four seconds or so and then you gently, 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 gently release it, taking as twice as long as you held it together if you can. And then you slide both hands down and bring them together and hold it for four and then release gently for six or eight as you exhale and feel the tension leave your own body when you do this. Then you slide down, bring your hands together, and release slowly, 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 working your way down the dog's body. Now he doesn't have a tail, but we'll pretend his leg is the tail. You can continue doing this, pushing the tail together a little bit, and then pulling away slowly, slowly down the dog's tail so or your cat's tail. Um, cats don't always like this as much on their tail but a lot of dogs do. So you start at the ears and work your way down the whole spine of the animal including the tail. Now you can also do it on their legs. Um, we do other things more often than not with the legs but if your dog is laying down um, well or even if they're standing you can do this on their legs as well. So we will move on to Tristan 
And you can do this with your dog even sitting. It doesn't matter what position he's in. Tristan, you're so short today. Can you stand up, bunny? Can you come up? Come on. Good boy. All right. Let's get your buns this way so that people can see you. Okay. So I'm just going to start by his ears. I've got my hands like this. Got to get through all that fluff and just push them together a little bit. And make sure you're moving the skin and not just the hair. And then slowly, slowly separate. And often they will lower their head like he's doing now. And then slide your hands down. I can feel a lot of warmth in one of his shoulders here. He's a jumpy guy. His shoulders get sore from landing. There's a lot of muscles around their shoulders and neck that hold all the organs in the dog's body from sliding forward when they jump down or go down the stairs and it gets very tight in that area. And I'm releasing and then I'm slowly sliding back a little bit and bringing my hands towards each other. And then gently releasing. Separating my hands as I do the release. Moving back about two inches on him, bringing my hands together. Now, if you've got a long dog, like a dachshund or a corgi or a basset hound, good boy, this. This is a great technique to help relieve some of the tension in their backs. And again, if you have any kind of a show animal or a performance animal, this is a great way to release stress from their entire muscular system. And in fact, their nervous system. And you can see he's moving around a little bit, but I can keep doing these little inchworm earthworms down his spine. He's exploring the kitchen table. <laughs> he hasn't been on the kitchen table too much in his life. And I'm still continuing these inchworms, even though he's gone down to sit. Now he's laying down. And one of the things we talk about in T-Touch, and we might talk about more about this at another time, is meeting your dog where they're at, or your cat, or your horse. And that means if they are anxious and nervous, you come to them in a way that they can understand when they're anxious and nervous. And if they are relaxed and sleeping, you know, you don't want to run over and get them up right away. So part of that concept translates to this. Tristan was standing, then he was moving, then he was sitting, now he's laying down. So I'm just continuing my gentle work on his back, no matter what position he's in. As long as I can reach him comfortably, as long as he's not leaving the area, um, that's a good thing. If they're moving around, that, that means they might be rearranging their body in response to the work you're doing. And I think I can get one or two more in because he's small, but he's long. <laughs> and as corgis go, he's not particularly long. It's the first time in a long time my head bobbing queen and my head bobbing corgis on the windowsill are having enough sunshine to move. <laughs> it's exciting. And I've got one more I can do with just my fingers. Now, if you're working like I have on a rabbit or a guinea pig that's quite tiny, you can just use these fingers and do the inchworm going this way and away. And that's what I'm going to do back here on his nubbin. Now, you don't have to do this with your dog sitting like upright like he is now, like a sphinx. They can also be laying on their side when you do this. Tristan's like, I was comfortable. Don't fall off your pillow, bunny. And here's your doggy to lay on. Where's your other hind leg? There. Now, I don't know if you can see him very well, but he's laying on his side. And I can do the same technique using his whole body, and this works great on a cat as well, bringing my hands together and apart.
and it's ideal if you can be separating your hands for twice as long as the amount of time that you brought them together. And again, this brings relaxation in the muscles and the nervous system. It relieves tension in the shoulders, neck, and back. And it's a great technique to um, increase your relationship with your animal because it is relaxing. I especially like to do it with a rabbit when they're laying in that sphinx pose um, with their legs in front of them in the front because as you go down their spine, and corgis will do this too, sometimes they stick their back legs out and get even longer because as you're relaxing them, the relaxation from the work just continues through the animal's body and they stretch out like a, a flying carpet, as I say, or a flying rabbit. And I think doing it on your animal's side with him laying down like this, it's also a great technique to do if your animal has had any kind of a digestive problem. What's up there, Biss? <laughs> um, for an animal that's had pancreatitis or um, something like that, and, or maybe they just had a round of diarrhea and vomiting, it, this is a great technique to bring relaxation to the gut as well if it's been painful and churning. And it's really fun to do to um, yourself. And it's a great way, as I said, to bond with your pet. You're so cute laying on your stuffed corgi pillow. I know, you had a big breakfast. There's a lot going on in that tummy. <laughs> okay, don't roll over on your back. Well, actually, if you do, here we go. I have to make sure he doesn't fall off, but he's completely upside down now. And again, you can do these inchworms down the middle of your dog if he's laying upside down like Tristan is now. Oh, he's really enjoying the stretching and the rolling. Oh, he's just blinking his eyes. He feels really good. Now, not all dogs will roll over when you do this, but Tristan really is happy on his back and the sun's shining in, and he does often take a little sun bath in the morning, like many dogs. They get their vitamin D from the sun. Try not to get too mixed up in their private areas there as you're going down their body doing this. And this is a good opportunity because he's so relaxed like this to show you. You can do some tea touches on the inside of the thigh here. I'm just doing some lying and clouded leopards, mostly lying. And then you can do some more of the leg circles that we did yesterday, just supporting the leg. So I just did some with his hip, and now I'm moving my way down to do his lower leg. And, oh yes, yeah, so happy. Don't fall off the table, honey. <laughs> we'll do a few circles with his front leg. And again, these leg circles are so good for balance, coordination. Again, relaxation of muscles in the shoulders and the hips for animals that have hip dysplasia. And a few circles on this leg. There is a corgi here falling down. <laughs> and just so the fourth leg doesn't feel left out since I'm always reminding him he has four legs when he comes in from outside and needs them wiped. I'll try to do a few circles on this leg. I can barely get a hold of it. Let's try getting under his hawk. My corgi is melting. <laughs> I 
You might have to catch them in a minute. <laughs> Biscuit. Thank you. You want to lay up here on the table so you don't hurt yourself? <laughs> so those are some the ex more examples of some tea touches that you can do with your pet. And as I said, the earthworm slash inchworm tea touch is a great one to do with your cat or your rabbit if you're at a show or even your dog if you're at a show. And they're really good techniques to use for tension in the neck and the shoulders and the back muscles. And also, I think, for dogs who have had, you know, a digestive upset recently, a round of diarrhea or vomiting, I find them um, to be really helpful to relax the digestive system as well. And again, you're engaging that parasympathetic nervous system when you're in, um, enhancing relaxation, and that allows the dog to go back into that rest, digest, parasympathetic response, as opposed to being in a stress, fear, flight, uh, faint response. So, Tristan, and I'm just doing a little nose march here while he's still upside down to reconnect his whole body. He is shedding and he has long hair. And you like this corgi as a pillow. So later on today, uh, Brian and I will be continuing to work on my website. Uh, the uh, blogs have not made it over to the new one with their photos. So we're gonna try to get the photos back with them. And then when you go to look for the blogs, there will be a primary photo with them so that you have some idea of what they're about if the title doesn't give you enough hints. And we'll be adding some other things to the website over the next couple of weeks until it is complete. But I am just so relieved to have a place where people can go and find out information about me and about T-Touch and craniosacral therapy and emotion code and Reiki and a lot of the things that I do with animals. So we will be here tomorrow, it's Saturday, live at 9.30 or 9.25, and also on Sunday at 9.25. And then Monday and Tuesday next week, I will be at my other position in the educational field. So I will not be doing live on Monday and Tuesday, but we will definitely be back on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And today it's gonna be 40. Seems warm here, probably not for most of you. And I am, interested to say that my sweater selections are getting a lot uh, thinner at the, at the end of my sweater wardrobe from doing all my Facebook lives. And it's a good thing the weather's changing because now I can move into the lighter weight ones. And unlike my sister, she's 300 miles away, but she's already able to wear t-shirts and not be freezing. And I can't even imagine that, but it does get quite hot here in the summer. And we'll be working on my garden and we'll be doing some of the Facebook lives out in my yard, which is beautiful. So I look forward to having you join me in the warmer weather. And I hope you all have a wonderful day and look at my new website. And also, um, yesterday Brian was able to put that hour-long radio interview I had with Dr. Bernie Siegel on my Facebook page, the one you're looking at, and Craniosacral Therapy for Animals. So you can go and listen to that on the link. And it is about an hour long. So make sure you have some time uh, to listen. He's an amazing storyteller, and we had a wonderful hour talking about animals in our lives and the many lessons that we have learned from our animals. So please check that out today as well. Thank you so much, and enjoy the sunshine. We haven't had sunshine here in two weeks. 